the prototype, a reflection for the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. In the first reading, we find David in Hebron in the act of making a covenant with the elders of Israel, who agree to support him as the new king. His success in uniting the tribes and leading their forces out and back provides the evidence to back up his claim of acting under the Lord's directive. You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander in Israel. Convinced of the legitimacy of the popular 30-year-old strong man, the elders anoint David king. While Saul had been primarily a military-style ruler, David attracted admirers for his political acumen, uncommon leadership qualities, and nobility of character, and over time became a larger-than-life archetypal figure that endured in the imagination of Israel down through the ages. With David, the rule of the king became intertwined with the covenant. As the divinely appointed shepherd of God's people, King David and his progeny bore responsibility for the security and comfort of the people and for the flowering of justice from the seeds of the covenant. It makes sense, then, that the prophets foresaw the coming Messiah in this vein. The second reading from Colossians sings with lofty images of Christ. In fact, biblical scholars suggest that the text, beginning with, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, and continuing to the end of the reading, comes from an ancient hymn. This snippet of early church liturgy drew inspiration from Hebrew traditions portraying the figure of divine wisdom as an active agent in creation. See Proverbs 8, verses 22 through 31. The prologue to John's Gospel, In the beginning was the Word, all things came into being through him, draws from the same tradition. We find this unfathomable mystery of Christ as the original image of the Creator, begotten before all time, sharing substance and creative activity with the Father, enshrined in the Nicene Creed. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. Though familiar from frequent repetition, this theologically dense language obscures more than it explains. We, like our early church counterparts, cast about for the right words to describe mystery, and failing to find them, resolve to repeat traditional formulations ancient hymns, creeds, that at least we hope aim in the right direction. That said, permit me to carry on with the casting about, seeking new language to describe mystery. An insight from today's reading that begins to emerge for me concerns the meaning of incarnation. We often narrow this great mystery of our faith to the specific events of Jesus' conception and birth. Today's reading from Colossians points to a much more expansive view. Christ, as the original image of God, becomes the prototype, a model for all bearers of the divine image, for all human beings. Thus, 
the image of the Creator in Christ, established before all ages, shapes the creation of all humanity. It makes sense, then, that the one through whom we are created comes among us to show us how to live and die as God intends, in trust and compassion. God sends the original, the prototype, to restore and reshape the ones created from the original, but distorted by sin. Using prototype as a metaphor in this theological reflection, I see incarnation and redemption flowing one into the other, a single great mystery unfolding through time, drawing us into the heart of God.